Yep, I spent for over 5 years 20k on my entire PC setup. And by the end of the year, it will be over it since the money I saved up for a GPU upgrade might either go to a 3D printer, a fully stacked NVMe NAS, Frameworks upcoming laptop 12 or all of the above. <sighs> Man, I hate GPUs right now. So, how can you spend 20k on a PC setup? Easy! By extending your main rig and monitors with a full-sized, fully loaded server rack right next to it. Isn't this a bit too much compute power for a humble channel such as mine? No. Because a home lab is an absolute must if you want to get really good in your IT job. And yeah, I'm telling you I'm working in IT without telling you I'm working in IT. <laughs> and I better explain what a WAC is since most of you guys probably have no clue what you are looking at right now. A server rack is basically a place to neatly store a bunch of computers. When I built my first PC, I only put it on a worldly office container right next to my desk. But I bought more and more stuff, ran out of space and I thought, hmm, I should probably do something about it. I mean, I could have stopped buying more tech stuff, but that was out of the question. You see, when your room becomes too small to house all of your tech, buy a server rack and throw it all in there instead. That's the abridged backstory for why I have this right next to my desk. Anyway, let me show you what I have. Top of the rack, I have my main server hosting all of my local applications via Docker. It's a simple board with 8 gigs of RAM, hosting a Casa OS web interface and Debian SDOS. Most of the stuff I run on it helps me with making YouTube videos, particularly making all of the diagrams you see in my videos. I can access all of these applications in my browser via my network, which is managed by these two devices. I have one UDM SE router from Ubiquiti, acting as the brain that allows all of my devices to communicate with one another. Right below it is a 26-port unified switch with Ether Lightning, connecting all of my devices via Ethernet or fiber cables. This is giving me the highest data throughput speeds and the RGB also shows how blazingly fast all of this is. <laughs> and yes, you need RGB in your switches. Especially if you have several dozens and need to locate only that one particular client. But yeah, this is my enterprise class network equipment. Right below them is the very first switch I bought for my WAC. It's a D-Link 28 port one I'm not using anymore because Unify is just so much better. I have no clue where else to put it, which is why I will let it stay there until I need that space for something else. Maybe for a new 10 gig switch from Unify if I decide to upgrade more of my devices with 10 gig NICs. Oh, and what all of these words mean is that 10 gig allows for faster data transfer speeds locally via cable, which is definitely better than Wi-Fi. Something I also have a Unify U6 Pro for with Wi-Fi 6E support. And hey, Unify's APR mounts can also be used in a WAC. <laughs> to get networking done, this is where my ISP connection comes in from. And if you wonder about the white cable, this connects to my G4 Pro. I bought it to test out Unify Protect and also have a way to see what's up in my WAC if something breaks and I'm not home. So, this is that. Down below here, we have my Proxmox Virtualization Server. Virtualization is essentially the ability to run 10 Windows and or Linux computers on one singular hardware computer. I can essentially run Windows 10, Windows 11, Linux and a bunch of other PCs simultaneously on this singular device. I built it myself since A. All the used servers on eBay are too loud if I'm sitting right next to them. Plus, I'm too lazy to mod them with Noctua fans. And B, I wanted a machine I can easily upgrade in the future. I don't use it anymore since I still have to patch its BIOS with the Intel microcode fix. And all of my compute needs are met with my Simmerboard. Plus, power is so fucking expensive, man. But hey, this baby here got me a new job in my town, so I can't complain. <laughs> B, 
best reason to build your own home lab right here. It helps you get a new job. Now, the biggest and most important part of my setup is my Synology NAS. It's loaded with six 10TB HDDs, storing all four machine backups, footage and assets I use in my YouTube videos. And boy, do I have a lot of footage. Lots of footage. Really like it and I highly recommend that everyone has a NAS at home. But editing in DaVinci Resolve from HDDs isn't fun. The lag is legit annoying. I think it's time to get a proper NVMe NAS in the next years. Oh, almost forgot this mini PC here. I use it to remote into my infrastructure via Tailscale. And dude, Intel's N100 CPUs are a whole other beast. This tiny mini PC pulls in idle only 0.5 watts. I can run this thing the entire year and spend next to nothing on power. Which is very fucking impressive. Though I will probably decommission it when my jet KVM arrives, as I will hook it up to my main PC and use it instead. Anyway, here's another Simmer board I attached an old 1050 Ti GPU to I had lying around. This is essentially my test bench to see how encoding and decoding works in something like Plex or Jellyfin. Both running inside Docker containers and boy! Getting a GPU pass-through to work on Linux together with Docker ain't easy. I'm not really using it for that anymore, but it is a great backup server for my main one. Plus, with the top one having a 4TB SSD and the lower one a 2TB SSD attached, I can store a lot of stuff on those as well. Down below this shelf is a 1U rail for my PoE-powered Raspberry Pi 4B. I bought it way back in college, where I wanted to get some real hands-on experience with Linux. Not gonna lie, best $50 investment I made back then. And I also used it to host my very first home lab applications. Nowadays though, I'm not using it at all, since I have other better machines. Also, the best part of this rail system let me unscrew those. Is that I can neatly fit in some teeny tiny Noctua fans, the PoE hat, and also HDMI cables with adapters. So, if I decide to extend this shelf with three other pies to learn how Kubernetes works, I'm very modular in what I can mount here. It's a cool system I got from my Austrian neighbors, Wagnacks. And it's made out of metal, so it can also attach magnets to it for cable management. With the best being from LTTstore.com. Buy a bunch of them if you too have a cell rack, because there's nothing better to cable manage an entire rack. Down here is the very first PC I ever built as an inexperienced, poor college student. It's jank shit. A couple of motherboard ports short circuited, and it is extremely subpar performance wise. <laughs> it's so fucking junk, man. I watched 50 or so PC build guides, bought the parts right during the end of the first COVID lockdowns, and I also. Oh, and also this old GPU here was the very first I installed in it. Because right as I was building this PC, the GPU apocalypse happened and getting decent GPUs became a fucking nightmare difficulty level. And shit hasn't changed even today! <sighs> now, down below this chunk is my current main wig. Hold up. Imagine having two phones. Oh, and before you mention rack mountable cases, I have no need for them. Especially for my main PC. Unless you tell me of a good one with a glass panel in front and with a rail system I can easily troubleshoot on the fly. Here you can see the inside of my main wig, which is heaps better than my old one. Essentially every mistake I made with my first build helped me to craft this superior machine. Plus with this glass panel, I can easily see when DDR5 RAM training is completed. Biggest reason as to why I wanted this Liam Lee case. And building in it is also a godsend. Now, this little device here is my KVM switch I hooked all of my servers up to. Story time! You can manage servers with remote protocols like SSH or RDP from any machine on your network. 
But what happens if you give anyone and anything the permission to read and write to anything, especially the secret passwords of all users on a Linux server? That's right! The system freaks out and locks out any attempt to remote into the machine because it thinks it is compromised. The result? Fun times to fix this clusterfuck! Man, this video brings out so many old and good memories. That is why I have this thing here in my rack to never lose access to any of my servers. We in IT love and need redundancy in every facet. Especially if I can save power, as I only need to use it in emergencies. Or maybe more often if my jet KVM finally arrives and I need access to my stuff on the fly. It really was a fun time to cable off the stuff through this patch panel here. All the way down to the KVM switch, they converged to one giant as cable bundle and boy, LTT's magnetic cable management is a fucking lifesaver again. So, troubleshooting anything with a direct connection? Check. Just as cool as... Man, do I really need more light? Yeah, we need more light. Also, a stream deck with an Elgato keylight is connected to my main PC. Keylight for if I need a strong as light to tinker with a machine. The stream deck is used for macros to control my PC by opening some programs and help with Audacity recordings. Anyway, back to this cool thing I discovered on Amazon. Those are magnetic controller holders. Now if you have a controller, or more, and sit also right next to a giant ass metal pole, it is such a fucking badass boss move to pull them out and get right into a gaming session. Oops. Trust me, it's cooler if I can use both hands. Yeah, by the way, PS5 controller stick drift issues is why I have two fucking expensive controllers now. You can't actually fix it by opening up your controller and clean out the dirt, but, well, I broke mine the second time around. Now one analog stick isn't working anymore and I still have to throw that shit out. As for this space, this is where I put down my phone to ignore it when I'm here. This is also the place where I put all of my mobile devices to charge them. I think you can tell with all of these different cables. So yeah, who needs some of those table stands if you can charge 6 devices at once? And right at the bottom of my rack is where I have all of my power in the back and a PS5. It's a base PS5 I only use to play exclusive Sony titles like Bloodborne, God of War, Ratchet and Clank and so on. Mandatory for my setup is this UPS from Eaton. This is a big ass power bank to keep my servers and NAS up and running in case of power outage. Now the cool thing is that I also set up a NAT server on my NAS via Docker. And no, I don't want my servers to NAT to all the power they get. A NAT server is in the goon stash. It is an application to automatically power off all of the devices attached to the UPS if its battery charge drops to a certain percentage. I don't have to think about the safety of my data, shit can happen when I'm not home and everything is safe. So that is everything I have in my rack. Next to my rack <coughs> is where I sit. POV, that's the view of a girl looking for a 6 feet tall guy. Hey, hey! This is the mic I do the voice over right now with. It's an RE3020 for those looking for a good mic. I use a Logitech G502 Lightspeed mouse with a power play mat right underneath my altitystore.com cyberstats desk pad powering my mouse. Shit's pretty dope and a lot of fun to use. My keyboard is 98% tactile keyboard from RK Wall. It's a pretty good one and I can't complain about it. Now this right here is the central brain for my entire audio setup. A Worldcaster Pro 2. Highly recommend it if you want a simple and elegant all-in-one solution for all of your audio needs. And bruh, managing your audio levels with physical faders is so satisfying. 
Also, this is the mic I used previously. Ashura SM7B. <laughs> I thought that this mic was defective because I had some weird audio anomalies with it. Which is why I swapped it out for the other mic. However, as I later found out, the mic is actually fine and I just had a bad XLR cable. I should probably pack it away somewhere, but I'm too lazy. Also another perk of my worldcaster is that I can hook it up to a second PC and manage its audio with it too. You can actually see the remnants of this here with this smaller KVM switch I mainly used for my old job when I worked from home. And I also thought that I would switch between both of my old and now main PC to do different stuff, but yeah, I just remote into it if I need to do something on the old chunk. Oh, and this long coil cable is for my headphones. The DT7070 Pro from Biodynamic. It's a great pair of headphones and the bus depth you get with those is really... Just like my Adam T5V studio monitors, which are here, there, and pretty great. Just like my monitors. On the left, I got an LG 2K display I have now for almost 5 years. It was my main display once, but it got replaced by this giant bad boy. Behold! The most immersive giant ass monitor with a 120cm diagonal 4K resolution estate. Let me tell you, gaming on this monitor is great and highly immersive. And also to watch stuff. Its biggest perk, however, is the space I have when editing videos in DaVinci Resolve or create diagrams. Here, let me show you one so you can see the scale at which I can work. Oh, and on the right is a cheap monitor from God knows who I use as a vertical display. So yeah, that's all I have. If you have questions about any of my stuff, leave a comment and I'll answer it. But don't expect an update video in a year or so, since this is pretty much my endgame setup. I honestly couldn't think of anything I wanted to change or add to it. But if you want to see all of the stuff I self-host, give this video a shit ton of likes and you will get a part 2 to this home lab slash battle station setup tour. And subscribe if you want to see more of the videos I make. So until next time guys, happy April Fools.